Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Today DIY, and today we're going to be looking at the Circuit Playground Express Biscuit by Dave Astells. He uh, does a lot of stuff with Adafruit, a uh, pretty cool guy, uh, and he came up with this idea to um, kind of have a like a breakout of all the pins on the Circuit Playground so that you can use it on a breadboard a little bit more easily. Uh, the Circuit Playground, you know, it's meant to use alligator clips, as you can see with these um, large pins, or you can solder to it, but if you want to do some like more prototyping, getting onto a breadboard, it's... I think that's like the one additional feature if you ask someone who was an avid, you know, uh, Circuit Python user and um, Adafruit board fan, what would you want to do with the Circuit Playground? It's use it on a breadboard because there's so many sensors on here where it's in this little compact package, like if you are able to prototype and use almost just kind of just this board with maybe one or two additional components, it can really shrink down your footprint for your project, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the way this is working is uh, obviously we've got the traces all broken out to these uh, pins, this right angle header here that will stick into a breadboard and it's front and back. Um, and then there's also handy instructions like this side faces toward the circuit playground. Uh, also we got the open hardware. Uh, and then we've also got the side faces away. So away. <laughs> and it also tells you the orientation of USB and battery. And if those instructions aren't clear enough for you, well, uh, I don't I don't know what to tell you, but <laughs> there uh, you can also just easily follow the traces because each uh, pin is clearly labeled uh, uh, as for what pin it corresponds to. And you can just follow the traces. Like I can see that this one here clearly going to ground and this one's clearly going to uh, five volt out. And uh, oh my goodness, that's where those two pins are. So you can easily see this is supposed to be the orientation. Now um, the battery connection obviously is pretty close to the pins. Uh, if you're using it on the breadboard, it's probably assumed you're gonna be using it with the USB. And also the um, the battery wires though, that tend to be on the uh, AA breakout packs you can get, or even the LiPo ones, they're pretty thin and flexible. So you can easily kind of bend around if you really, if you really need to. Uh, now this isn't really a, this isn't a review. This is uh, just kind of, kind of a showcase of a cool idea. Uh, Dave posted this up in the Adafruit Discord. I commented saying, that's really cool. I'd totally use that. And then he offered to kindly send me one, which was super nice of him. Uh, so this is kind of a prototype. I think he's going to be having it on Tindy. Um, but I will update any links down in the description uh, when that comes out. But this, I think, is the, like the first iteration. He'd also talked about maybe rounding the corners as well. Uh, so yeah, I thought we could like put this together, um, play around with it, just kind of take a look at this cool idea. Uh, so he also sent out the hardware for it, which are some, some brass standoffs and some screws. And so let's... I'm not gonna null, but I am gonna separate them a bit. And this is like nice hardware. So he first showed this on the uh, Adafruit show and tell, like this concept of kind of putting boards in, uh, kind of stacking things on the circuits uh, playground in this way. So you're gonna be using two screws per standoff. So let's actually get all the standoffs situated um, on here. So this is already pretty cool seeing how it it populates on. It looks like he sent an extra standoff just in case. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for looking out. So we've got all the standoffs on. It looks very pretty right now. It's nice and ooh. Uh, and so now we're going to be putting the board onto here uh, and uh, we'll be putting the screws in. The only thing that I can see might be a little bit tricky is possibly a little bit of the wobble that may occur when we're trying to mount it on since there there's nothing sticking out. But I think if we do it, you know, CPU cooler style, you know, make an X and secure it, I, th I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> uh, I did grab this Allen key just in case because they're a little bit small. Uh, so let's start with this top corner. Very nice. Now you don't want to, similar actually to a CPU cooler, I, I want to say you don't want to over tighten this because you don't want to crack the board, but I think the screws are short enough that that will kind of not happen. So I'm just kind of doing it finger tight. I actually want to loosen this one a little. There we go. Yeah, I'm just doing it kind of finger tight. As soon as I feel it kind of clamp onto the board, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm just all halt. 
I love how many ground pads there are on the circuit playground. It makes things real nice. All right, it's all assembled. It looks nice. It looks, it's got some heft to it, which I like because I, I don't feel like it's gonna fall off. Um, and it's, it, it looks, it looks cool. It looks very steampunky with the screws and the hardware and everything. It kind of looks like it's been bedazzled, which uh, I'm into. <laughs> um, so just one thing, this. Uh, so I had done a similar project with um, using kind of force to secure a connection with those large solder pads on the circuit playground. Uh, and that was with the Pedal Pi controller board. I will link the video at the end. But basically I am very precariously using some, some screws and standoffs to wrap wire around the pads and just securing it that way. Uh, and it worked, it worked really well. Uh, the button connections are also just tensed. That's probably a little bit less uh, great than <laughs> using the standoffs to kind of screw everything in. And everything is just suspended in this lovely pencil case. Uh, I am planning to revisit this project uh, and, uh, you know, clean it up a bit, probably code it in Circuit Python. This was done with Arduino. Um, a bit of a waste to do that with the express board since it has the extra capability. Also make code, uh, but um, it worked. So, you know, using this as an example and this less clean version as an example, you can totally use Circuit Playground boards in final projects with additional hardware without having to solder, which is great for kids or people who just don't feel like soldering. I did this really quick one afternoon on the weekend. Uh, so yeah, it works. And the Circuit Playground too, like it's it's a bit of a pricier board as far as a dev board goes. I believe it's about 25 USD, which for what you're getting is amazing. You have so many sensors on here and everything like that. If you bought every sensor individually on a breakout, including like NeoPixels and everything, like it would be over 25. But with that price point in mind, you may not want to necessarily leave your board in a project in a very permanent way. Uh, this allows you to kind of take it out uh, while still getting the job done. And this too, I could easily disassemble this and use a circuit playground board for something else without a problem. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a really cool concept. I hope more people uh, look into that. But now that we've got Dave's uh, board all set and assembled, let's go over to my computer uh, and uh, let's fire up some make code, try out some breadboard examples with this, see how it's, uh, how it's doing. Okay, so we have the circuit playground biscuit uh, hooked up to a breadboard. All the grounds are grounded. All the 3.3 volts are bolted. Um, and I've got some kind of a test bed going here. I've got a, a potentiometer, I've got a switch, I've got a temporary button, uh, I've got a NeoPixel ring. Uh, right now I'm running a script for the NeoPixel ring, as you can see here with make code. Uh, now, just a disclaimer, the colors look weird because it's an RGBW ring. Um, I didn't, uh, it fit nicely in the shot, so I, I used it. But you can see it's, it's spinning and it's hooked up uh, via the, um, the biscuit. So that is working. Um, I have some other test scripts here. Uh, let's go to, um, let's do this switch here. So this, if the switch is, uh, is being read, the onboard NeoPixels are going to do the, the rainbow bright animation. So let's load that on. I like now that, um, with make code, the desktop app, it just goes, I don't have to drag and drop a file. That was terrible when I had to do that, but <laughs> now it's great. Uh, so yeah, the switch is on. You can see it's, it's spin around. If I turn the switch off, it's going to stop. See, it's not on anymore. You just get colors. They're not spinning though. Um, uh, so now let's throw in, I wanted to show that you could still use alligator clips if you really, really wanted to. So I have this uh, temporary button and I have it set up so with the alligator clips. So ground and then uh, pin A4. And when I press it, it's going to play a little sound. Let's download that. Okay. As you can see, NeoPixels went off. That's good. I found I have to press for long enough for it to register, but... Probably need some button debouncing, but this is, this is make code. Um, 
So it's working. Yay. Um, and then one final test I wanted to show. If you want to get really fancy with a lot of like peripherals, we're going to use the, the pot and the switch. So if the switch is high, it's going to play a sound, but we're going to set the volume with the trim pot. And I know from experience, I should have the pot all the way down and it is. Uh, so let's download this. Let's turn that off and back on. It's very loud. We're awake. Okay, yep, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, the biscuit works, uh, which it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, but uh, I like throwing in the breadboard, throwing in those extra sensors. It makes it really easy if you don't want to finagle of alligator clips. But if you do want to finagle, you, you can still do that because of the spacing and everything, which is pretty cool. So I think it's a great concept, especially if you wanted to like bring kids a step further with electronics, introduce them to the concept of a breadboard and kind of wiring things up like that, especially if they're already familiar with the circuit playground, then that'll be a nice transition for them. Uh, uh, once Dave brings that to market on Tindy, which I believe he is going to be doing that, I will throw the link down in the description. Also, if you follow me on social media, uh, you, I'll definitely be tweeting that out and all the other things that one does on social media. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, toss me a thumbs up. Leave a question or comments down below. I'll link down to Dave's stuff in the description. He's doing really cool work. Uh, he was very generous to send this out to me to take a look at. I plan to use it uh, in prototyping future projects when I'm using the circuit playground. Um, kind of just breaks everything out. Um, really cool. Uh, so thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.